All right. So now we need to think about what's happening to the pulley. It is actually accelerating. It's just not accelerating linearly. It's accelerating angularly. And so we need to be able to relate this force of tension to the torque that is on our pulley. We're going to start by using our um, equation that I just gave you, which is torque equals I alpha. So notice, um, the linear acceleration can be related to the force of tension using the hanging mass, whereas the rotational acceleration is related to the force or is involved in this equation with the torque. Now, I need to substitute some things into this. I want to know how this equation is related to this situation. And it's related because this force of tension that is on the pulley is what causes this torque. Now, we should remember that we have another equation We know that torque is equal to a force times the radius between the center and where that force is applied. In this case, the radius is the radius of the pulley, and the force is the force of tension. So by combining these two equations, which is something we will do often, we create a very helpful equation, which is force times radius is equal to rotational inertia times angular acceleration. And we can use this equation and the equation that we found for the hanging mass previously in order to do a very important thing and, and solve for the acceleration of our whole system, which is what we're typically asked to do in a pulley. All right. To finish our analysis of pulleys, we're going to focus on how to solve for the acceleration of the pulley. Now, in order to solve for the acceleration, we know there's two things that are involved. One, the forces on the weight help to determine the acceleration. And we know that, the, that we've already described the force of weight by saying that the net force equals the force of weight minus the force of tension on that hanging mass. The other thing that determines the acceleration is the forces on the pulley and how the pulley spins. Because we know that the pulley and the mass have to both be accelerating the same way because they're connected by a rope. You couldn't imagine the pulley spinning really fast and the mass just staying there. That wouldn't work. And so we know from the, our analysis of the pulley that the force of tension equals the radius times the radius equals I alpha. And so both of these equations are actually related to acceleration. But I need to take a step before I have acceleration in them in the first place. Here, I need to know that acceleration is equal to the radius times the angular acceleration. And so alpha is equal to A over R. Okay. Here, I need to remember that net force equals mass times acceleration and substitute that in. Now, as I said before, typically I'm not going to know what my force of tension is. And so usually what I have is I have two unknown variables. Usually I'm trying to solve for acceleration and I don't know force of tension. Though sometimes it's the other way around and I'm trying to solve for force of tension, but I don't know the acceleration. In either case, what I need to do is use one equation to solve for one variable and then plug that into the other equation to get my real answer. So here I'm solving for acceleration 
and I'll assume that I don't know force of tension. So I'm going to use this equation to create an expression for force of tension. Now, I can take this equation and plug it into my other equation to solve for acceleration. Okay, This makes it just a matter of some algebra. I'm going to bring this term over to this side and then factor out the a's. And then I have to simply take this and divide it onto the other side. Now, of course, I should know the force of weight. This is the force of weight of the hanging mass. I should know this mass. Um, this mass is the mass of the hanging mass. And then I need to keep in mind that this I, the rotational inertia, is the rotational inertia of the pulley. And that the radius here is the radius of the pulley. You always have to make sure you keep track of what your variables are. And I usually would be given these things in my problem and could simply plug in and solve for acceleration. Um, all of this would work the other way around if I was trying to solve for force of tension, and you'll see that in your practice problems. Um, if the math was at any point confusing, well, it's a video, so you can pause it and just rewind. Give that a shot, try the practice problems, and I'll see you another time.